everybody. We're going to, uh, we're looking at a compost pile that we made on the 1st of July, and we know we made it on the 1st of July because we actually labeled it 1st of July. It's really good to keep records of what you're doing, so then you can get an idea of how successful your practices are. And we're going to unclip this fence here, and we're going to put this fence as the container in that position instead of this position. So we'll take all the outside dry brown material, and we'll put it as the base of this next compost so the spores can actually germinate and so it can start decomposing as woody material. If you look at the temperature probe, which is in the core of the pile, the temperature is over 50 degrees, which is which means that the core is alive and well and active. Okay. So the compost is doing its magic. It's it's uh, being decomposed by microorganisms and we just want to accelerate the process by turning it and watering it again, and by moving the material that's on the outside on the inside to the inside. Now, if there's a lot of weed seeds or seed in this outside material, these seeds will still germinate because they haven't been killed by the high temperatures of the composting process. However, when we put this material in the center and it becomes the core of the next heap, then it'll reach the temperatures of over 55 degrees, and the weed seeds or any seeds in here will be killed and pathogens will be killed, any diseases will be killed. So let's move this uh, fence to the next position. So we use these little animal clips, animal lead clips, uh, double-ended, um, and uh, it makes it very easy to, to move the fence. And then we have a new container back to move this compost into this new container. Now we have a couple of willing hands with pitchforks. So we'll just start stripping off this outside high carbon material and we'll put it into the core of this next pile. Now we're exposing the core of the material, core of the compost pile. And you can see that we have some decomposition here. That's actually very warm. Now we want to take a handful of this and squeeze it as hard as we can. Okay, we didn't get a drop of water out of it, which would be the ideal, but we got a good wet hand, so that means that we could use a little bit more moisture, but this is moist enough to, to get your temperature accelerated. So we're just going to continue to water this and, uh, and stack the material on it, and you two can go ahead and layer it up now. When we first made this pile, we made it layer after layer. We made a layer of high carbon, which is straw and wood chips layer of green waste, which is fresh green material, grass, clippings, etc., and a layer of manure. We put minerals all through it. Now, on the first turn, of course, all that gets mixed up, okay, so it's no longer a layered system. The finer the mist, the better it absorbs, and the less it runs off. So the finest misting nozzle you can get is that. When we're done with this, we're going to try to cover it pretty well with a tarp so that all the material gets nice and moist inside, and so the, the uh, high carbon material breaks down better. The manure is obviously very active. The biochemical processes of the microorganisms are actually working, or otherwise we wouldn't have our temperature. You can still recognize all the material in this compost pile. It would be less recognizable if it was damper, especially on the outside, but it's still decomposing quite nicely. Now, the white in here is actino, and actino is interesting because scientists seem to still argue over whether it's an, a fungi or if it's a bacteria, but one of the things about it is it, it makes antibiotics. So as the compost top pile dries out, which this is doing, the actino can dominate, and reduce the bacterial activity because it's continually making antibiotics. So one of the things that we want to make sure of is that we have healthy actina to break down the lignin, but it doesn't become so dry that it actually makes, dominates with its antibiotics and it's harder to get the temperature in the pile on the first turn. I don't think we're going to over wet this because the it's, uh, material is actually quite dry. It's actually a bit drier than it needs to be. But Daniel's also been away for a couple of weeks and these things happen, so we have to just show you now what we're doing to recover it and get it active again so we meet our timelines of decomposition, which should be six to eight weeks.
This should be well and truly turned into soil in six days. If we find that this pile does not uh, reach temperature of 55 degrees in three or four days, then it could be because the actina has produced too many antibiotics. If this occurs, one of the things we can do is add 10 liters of molasses with about 40 liters of warm water into it, and that'll run right through the pile and activate the bacteria again, and the pile will, will kick start. So when a, if a compost pile stalls molasses or fish fertilizer, liquid fish fertilizer is two great ways of activating it, because you can just pour it through it. You don't have to turn it to add the nitrogen or the activator. What would be the signs that? What's that? What would be the signs that your compost has become inactive or not uh, biologically you're not active? You're not reaching temperature within three or four days. If you're not reaching 55 degrees in, 50, in three or four days after you turn it the first time, then it's not as active as it needs to be, and you can add a little bit of of uh, activator, which gets the bacteria uh, reproducing again. And activators can be fish emulsion. Um, it can be uh, molasses mixed with water. Anything that you can mix with water that gets the bacteria working and that runs through the pile so you don't have to turn it. Also use manure tea. You can mix manure with water and pour it through and that activates it as well. So if you have a wheelbarrow full of cow manure and, and wet it up into a slurry and pour it on, that water will run the nutrient down into it and activate the compost pile again so it reaches it's 50 to 55 degrees in three or four days. If you really want to monitor this carefully and achieve easy success, uh, then water the compost pile for five minutes every day and keep it fairly well covered um, with a tarp. Don't seal it with plastic or seal it with a tarp because it needs to breathe. This is actively aerated. This is aerobic thermal compost. You need to have an aerobic process so it needs to breathe and in order for it to breathe it needs to have access to air, oxygen, carbon dioxide. This is aerobic thermal compost which means we're choosing or selecting for aerobic microorganisms to dominate. We still have anaerobes in the system but it's dominated by aerobic processes which means it never smells putrid. It smells like decomposing material, it may smell like yeast or mushrooms, but it's never putrid, it never smells like rotting flesh. It's never something you, that smells bad that you don't want to work around, or you don't want to put your hands in. The final product should actually smell and look very much like very good quality topsoil. The final product should also be at least 50% living microorganisms. And the key to that figure is 50% living microorganisms in high diversity. And it's the diversity that counts. Because it's the diversity that allows the plants to select the organisms they want to make mutualistic relationships with. It's the diversity that allows the microorganisms to make relationships with the parent material in your soil. So let nature choose what organisms actually survive and dominate once it's applied. And what chooses what, supply, what survives and dominates is your plants and your soils and of course things like your environment, your rainfall. So that's why we call this Trust Nature. It's trustnature.com.au and it's trust nature because we let nature select and we let natural cycles dominate. So what we're trying to do is support and enhance natural cycles. It's actually a natural microbial decomposting system, aerobic thermal compost. And as you can see, with uh, Two very fit young men, this can be turned in a matter of 20 minutes. But at the end of this, we're going to end up with a ton of very high quality compost that's enough to enrich a good sized family garden bed for fresh food and enough high quality compost to make enough compost tea or what we call soil probiotic 
to spray out on literally over a hundred hectares of land. So as an inoculant, as a source of microbes, this is phenomenally valuable. As a soil amendment, this is very valuable. As a way to manage waste, this is very valuable. This is really turning waste into resource. Good compost can be made on most farms from um, on-farm material that's typically wasted, or certainly its potential is not maximized. This is realizing the maximum potential of waste material used to grow a high diversity of microbes, beneficial to your soils, beneficial to your plants, beneficial to building soil fertility and soil quality while maintaining plant production and plant health. Using this system, we can certainly grow vital food for a whole lot less than we would grow food grown with chemicals. Managed well with good labor input and good management and clear direction, we can use this system to literally grow food for free in our local communities and in our, on our farms. And when we're done with this, we'll take that orange ribbon and we'll mark the first day we turned it so that we, keep a, keep, we maintain a record. Records are important because it shows us the success of manipulating compost. Like if this was too hot, we might have, may have added more straw. If it was too cold, we may have added more manure. At this point in the decomposition process, uh, we haven't lost much material. We've lost some to compaction things settle down. Um, the weight of water helps things settle down. Microbial activity does reduce the biomass. It doesn't necessarily reduce the weight. I don't have any water running off of this. It's all being absorbed in because it's dry, because I'm constantly moving the sprinkler, and because it's a reasonably fine spray. I would prefer a finer spray because the finer spray definitely absorbs better. At the bottom of the compost actually is some pretty well decomposed material that we could probably add into a uh, potting mix or seed raising mix even at this point. There's enough decomposition in it. I think that's enough water. We'll water it again tomorrow and we'll cover it with a tarp so that it can all steam up in there and the very dry material will have a chance to absorb the moisture from the steaming process, from the condensation. And of course, when you do it as a team, it's a hell of a lot more fun and a whole lot more productive. We like to keep it tidy around the compost heap. It's a good work ethic. Keeps the neighbors from complaining if it's done in your backyard. And how simple was that? What did that take? 10 or 15 minutes? Kane Abbott's there behind the video, so come on around here, Kane. Come on around here, guys. <laughs> One, two, three, grow! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Food for free. Trustnature.com.au. Have fun.